There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a selection of the best games of Carlson versus Caruana to date. Yeah, and some amazing fighting games in there. But now I think it's a good time for us to really give our viewers an overview as to who has got the upper hand as things are in November 2014. Yeah, that's what this series really is about. We've had a look at the history between those two, the world champion and the world number two. It's time to find out who's, who we consider to be stronger at this point in time. And the easiest starting place is the individual score, mm -hmm. which is 5-4 to four in favor of Magnus Carlsen if we're only counting classical games and only counting wins and losses, not counting draws, which is what we do. So he's leading by the smallest margin possible, he's up one point. And also has to be said, he did score some wins early in like 2010, we've seen one or two in this series when Karana was not the player mm -hmm. he is today. Recently they've been relentlessly trading blows. A lot of decisive games with one beating the other, then the other coming back. Very hard to say who's stronger by that measure. No, absolutely. I think it's clear that uh, Karawana has had the, the better uh, of things uh, in their most recent battles, scoring some big wins. But yes, Carlsen is still managing to deliver decisive blows. So just a, a really fantastic development of this, uh, of this particular head-to-head. -head. But uh, also we have to bear in mind, Jan, the, the actual ELOs, the, the, the ELO ratings, the current ratings. Carlsen is, at the moment, rated 28-62 versus Caruana, who's rated 28-29. So that's... Right. That's a that's a serious indicator of that's still a very strength. serious difference. Yeah. It's 33 points. However, the gap has been closing a lot. Like if we look back a couple months, it was probably 2870 something versus 2795 right. something. Nearly like 100 that, right? points. Yeah. So close to yeah 80 90 points. Well, now we're down to 30 points. Corona was higher than that. He was even touching 2850 at some point. He can. He can be a danger even on the rating list, he's shown that, but at the moment, of course, point for Carlsen, highest rated player in the world. Absolutely. So, so far, Carlsen with the upper hand, according to those two uh, factors, head-to-head, -head, current rating. But what I think would be really interesting, Jan, is to perhaps look a bit more into the individual strengths and weaknesses sure. um, and give them a rating in that sense. Something that we don't see on the FIDE website, something we don't see on our blog, but actually what we feel yeah, we course, can, we can give them. Highly subjective. Highly subjective. Every day, but let's get started. My favorite category, the oh. opening. Mm. What do you give Carlson out of five? It's easier to start with Karana because that's a clear five. Mm. I wouldn't have said that two years ago where I felt he was actually a little underprepared for a player of his level. But nowadays, for what we've seen from him, not only in St. Louis but also in the tournaments, leading towards that, Shamkir and so on, fantastic preparation. Arguably the best white E4 player out there, a lot of ideas and all the lines with black. He's been super solid in E4, E5, in the Grunfeld. He's been expanding his repertoire recently adding the Queen's Gambit declined, adding the Slav, becoming more unpredictable. One of the best prepared players in the world, Fabiano Carona. Magnus Carlsen, more difficult conversation. He's just finished the World Championship match against Vichyanon as we record this, where it looked like he didn't have an opening against 1d4. It, to me it looked like that. He's always gotten by, not by playing heavily analyzed lines, and knowing them to move 45, but by choosing smartly and getting his type of positions, not so important if he's slightly worse with black or gets nothing with white, but avoiding the opponent's strength. I had the feeling in a match he couldn't really hide his lack of deep knowledge against Anand. He did improve on it during the match though, and he's been doing great obviously in tournament play. I'd give him three out of five in this category, mm -hmm. of course judged against the highest standard, which is Karana, Kramnik, Anand, those guys. Okay, very interesting. So 
Caruana with a, a clear advantage when it comes to the opening phase. Mm. What about, let's go to the middle game. Now, the middle game is over. It's difficult to assess somebody. I mean, you don't get to 2800 plus without being superb in the middle game. But would you, I mean, for me, I would give Carlson an absolutely clear five. I think once you get into middle games, we saw it in his match against Anand. We see it all the time, how he begins. That's really where he begins to start to outplay. To do his thing. Yeah, to do his thing. So I don't think you can give anything less than a five for Carlson. No, we've just mentioned he's not the strongest opening player and he is the highest rated player of all time. So not to give him a five in the middle game in makes no the sense. field for the game department yeah. makes no sense. So clear five for Magnus Carlson. Caruana? Fabiano Caruana. He's also a world class player and it almost feels like blasphemy not to give him a five here, but if we're comparing him to Magnus, who is the gold standard here, I feel Corona is slightly less complete when it comes to imagination, intuition, the range of mm -hmm. stuff available to him. He's more of a, <clears throat> I don't know how to say it, a classical player who sticks to a game plan well. Feels like for Carlson the whole he can think outside of, the box, yeah. yeah. Imagination is mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. So I'd give Corona a 4 out of 5, mm -hmm. which of course is very general. Like both sides have their individual strength, even sure. here, which we'll get to later. Let's go to the next one. Endings. His endings. Yeah. Another very tough one. Well, I think you have to give Carlson a 5. Uh, although, you know, we said during this series, didn't we, that when Carlson has to defend an ending, like right. Caruana said, he's perhaps not as strong but in general if you look at the positions he either manages to hold or win in the I think for me and I remember speaking to Julian Hodgson about this one of England's greatest he said Do you know what it is for me with Carlson it's that transition from the middle game into the end game ending knowing when to do it knowing how to do it and he doesn't think there's anybody stronger so I'm gonna give Carlson a five for an ending because I just think they're so well connected yeah I agree, once again, a lot depends on your definition of ending. If the queens are off the board, you could argue it's a queenless middle game, you could argue it's an end game, you can't argue Carlsen is incredibly strong there. Yeah, I think what you said is accurate. Carlsen might not be the best technical end game player, yeah. especially when he has to decide. There, Karana is arguably even superior to him, but the complete package of Carlsen, like when to transition, his technique, his tenacity, his stamina when it comes to playing endings in general, clearly he deserves a five. He scores a lot of points gr scores grinding points. out endings. What about Caruana? I think, once again, in comparison to Carlson, we have to give him a four out of five. Mm -hmm. I think there's areas where he's even stronger than Carlson, which is technical end games, calculation in the ending, like really cleanly calculating all the lines till the end. We've seen an example or two where he's crushed Carlson in this department in this series even. But he doesn't, or to me, he doesn't have the whole grinders package yet, that he scores wins out of nothing and like just keeps playing, winding opponents down mm -hmm. at the top level, holds very, very difficult situations. We haven't seen that much from him as from Carlsen. So in comparison to Carlsen, four out of five. Okay. And that for the three phases of the game yeah. leaves us with a tie, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, that, that gave both 13 would, that out of 15. Is, that is 13 out of 15. There are a lot. There are a few other really interesting facets. Again, we could go into this for hours, but some uh, elements that we uh, talked about before uh, recording this video. I think one key area, Jan, which is a really interesting area, is calculation. I, I, I think that's a key facet. That's a key. Uh, 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 element of not well, it's the key element of the game of chess, isn't it? It's, uh, without well, calculation, you chess, whatever. You calculate it. <laughs> Caruana. Five out of five. There's nobody better, is there, in terms of pure calculation, accuracy, and calculation? There really Certainly, isn't anybody yeah, better. What we've seen recently, yeah. it's hard to say there is anybody better, and we've mentioned during the series. He's been putting in a lot of work with his trainers, like. <clears throat> training calculation mm -hmm. and it clearly shows. And what about Magnussen in terms of calculation? I think he's underrated as a calculator, which sounds strange for the best player in the world, the world champion, but we don't associate him with that. He's I more of a field player, isn't he? That's and a lot, of, a lot of people say that. That's what people say, but in order to be a field player you also have to calculate a lot of small lines and you have to 
Yeah. Know your way around the chessboard mm -hmm. anyway. You don't get to 2870 without being tremendous at calculation. Still, in comparison to Caruana, I feel he has a bit more one move blunders. Like, not a lot, but we've seen, we've seen one or in two series, in this yeah. series. Mm -hmm. So I would give him four out of five when it comes to pure calculation skills. Okay, and uh, talking about feel and uh, intuition, which I think is the, the term we're going to use for this particular category, what would you give Carlson? For me, it's a clear five. Yeah, no question there. Intuition, creativity, imagination, five points. Mm -hmm. And what about Fabiano? Well, he's more based in calculation, mm -hmm. as we saw in mm -hmm. the last category, so I'm not quite sure if we give him four out of five, three out of five. It's not... It's, it's not, not his forte, but he's so complete, Yeah. of course, as a player as well, that you can't say, okay, he doesn't have imagination. Let's say, what are we giving him, three? Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult one, because we're saying we're giving a guy three out of five, but he's number two in the world and had one of the best performances ever. I mean, this well, is all... that applies to every this category. This applies to every category, yeah. In the world. Okay, we can do that. I, I feel that we might be being a bit harsh here, but certainly compared to Carlson, is, after all, that is what we are doing. Um, perhaps, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that, three out of five. Right. What about nerves? Because nerves is a big part of chess. We saw it, uh, Vishian and admitted that his nerves weren't as good as Magnus's. Surely Magnus now, being the complete package, won everything, defended yeah. his title. Got to give him a five, haven't we, for nerves? Yeah, once again, there's a lot of factors like confidence, stability, nerves. You could use all those words. But yeah, Magnus Carlsen has defended his world champion title twice. He hasn't crumbled under pressure, he's bounced back very nicely from situations that didn't look good for him, like in Shamkir where he lost two games in a row and went on to win a couple games, so he hasn't shown anything but good nerves and good composure. What about for Fabiano then? What do you think? I think we have to give him well, we haven't seen anything bad from him. He does seem very cool, calm, collected, mm -hmm. doesn't get rattled. Mm -hmm. In St. Louis, he has five out of five and doesn't go crazy, but yeah. just keeps winning mm -hmm. games. So he's good at this. He doesn't have experience at the super nerve testing level, which is the candidates matches, the world championship matches, that kind of stuff. And he has bungled a few tournaments in the final rounds before St. Louis like in Shamkir or Norway Chess, mm -hmm. he hasn't managed to put together a complete tournament mm -hmm. in the final stages. I'd give him four or five. Okay. Physical fitness. Well, have you seen these Magnus <laughs> volleyball videos? I have, yeah. He's, he's in good shape. Guy. He's in good shape, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go with the... F I mean, he's playing sport every rest day. He, he needs to be yeah, fit. Yeah, he's very he? public about it. And he yeah. also makes it part of his regimen that he really he needs his sports to get out of his system and it's one of his big strengths. He's very, very strong physically. He can play eight hours and he can sit out upon it. So five out of five for Carlson. And uh, Fabiano? I think he's also he's very in good fit. Shape. He he's in good shape. Gym. I yeah. think he, he works out, he goes yeah. running and so on. Once again, compared to Carlson, he's less impressive. I don't think it's as high a priority for him as it is for Magnus. So I give him four out of five. But it's a forte of both these guys, also because of their age. They're 24 and 22 years old. Compared to Vichy, Kremnik, Gelfand, this generation, they are in better physical shape. Okie dokie, I would agree with that one as well. And what about work ethic? What about homework, if we can call it that, or work ethic? Well, all I've seen and heard from Karana is you can't... He's a tremendously a hard worker. Yeah. I don't think he's attended public school. He's been focusing on chess, putting in long hours since a very young age. And he, he's not showing any signs of slowing down or stopping. So to we'll give him a five. To clear five out of five. And that really shows in his chess too, the openings, the calculating skills. Super hard worker. And Magnus? More difficult case. Like mm. Kramnik called him a genius recently and he said, in chess you have to work very hard unless you're a genius like Magnus, which kind of implies that he might not be such a hard worker. I'm not sure if that's true. I think he has a different working method, which is less organized, less structured than a Karana, than a Kramnik. He's more like in his head he's thinking about positions and it works for him. But he clearly doesn't put in as many organized hours as a Karana, as 
the cram neck or as a cram neck used to do. And also, it has to be said, as a world champion, he has a lot more distractions, a lot more mm. obligations. Mm -hmm. he, he has these modeling gigs, he has a lot of, well, we see him every other day in Silicon Valley with Mark Zuckerberg on a TV program with Bill Gates in Real Madrid, which I'm sure he enjoys a lot of this stuff, the marketing stuff, but it all comes out of chess time, right? So four out of five for Magnus Carlsen. And last but not least, the most important, what do you rate their looks? Um, that is a very important <laughs> question. That we didn't write that one down. I put him on the spot. Yeah, that's your, your expertise. We'll give them both They're a both five. Handsome, They're both right? beautiful guys. So um, with that then, with those uh, points that we identified as really the did king. Did we count these points together? We, we, we did. Okay. I did. All right. Magnus, the final score? Magnus wins, I believe, by two points. And that is purely on our subjective scale and assessment, which is uh, uh, in no ways reflects the views of Chess24 or its owners. Well, yeah, it kind of does reflect the views of 24, <laughs> of Chess24. Yeah, Carlson wins just by a few points. Of course, he had to win because otherwise Caruana would be world champion, he'd have a higher rating and the rest of it. But it's closer than it's ever been. It is very close of you, yeah, by most margins. And also, we have to take into account Karana has been improving at a quicker yes. rate than Carlson mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. which is understandable mm -hmm. because, well, first of all, Carlson is a bit older. He's already at the top of the chess world for five years. Mm -hmm. There is less room for improvement for him, but Karana is really, he's been climbing the ranks every year. You can see him reach a new level. 2012, he joined the very elite. 2013, he started fighting for victory in almost all the tournaments. 2014, it's all been coming together with this St. Louis incredible performance. So, who knows what would happen in a match in 2016. I agree with you, at the moment, Carlsen, still the stronger player by the smallest of margins. 2016, no idea. Absolutely, so one thing's for sure, Carlsen really has got a contender on his hands. We're going to see if Fabiano manages to do the business at the candidates, assuming he qualifies, which he probably will via rating at the very least. And I would be surprised if he didn't get the nomination if he didn't manage to qualify through other means. No, I'm sure he's going to be in there. He'll but be to in win a summer. tournament like that, even if you're the strongest player, that's something else. It's, it's, a, it's another story. One thing's for sure, we will keep our eyes on that. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I know I certainly have, looking at all their... Uh, fantastic games and remember to check out the rest of the content here on Chess24 but for now it's been a pleasure. Mr Gustafsson as always take care and uh, see you guys very soon.